Here we are heading off on another trip. We're heading towards Zor Valley. We just left Buffalo. I'm here with my buddy Nick and Tom. We got Tom way back there because he just got some new plastic teeth and we're worried he's a biter from like The Walking Dead. So we keep him at least you know six, I'm seven feet away. He looks like a biter, man. So we should be in Zor Valley about 25 minutes or so and uh, check out a couple of the different entrances and Yo. get a good view over of the uh, overlook and then go around and See if we can get in the water a bit. It's yeah. like 90 degrees today, we so. Got dog treats for eat. <laughs> we got dog treats for him, especially. He needs them. <laughs> dog treats and Twizzlers for this guy. Yeah. So Zor Valley has been one of my favorite places for years. I came down here in high school, probably when I started driving when I was 16, and uh, man, it's just an amazing spot. You've got like four or 500 foot uh, cliffs on both sides, and if you walk down into the water, it's just like really cool, like nice water, amazing views, and so it's great for like, if you like, like the water hiking, or if you like kayaking, and there was even a nudist colony at one point. So if you like doing that, you know, you could always do that. And then there's some cool waterfalls around there and uh, a bunch of hiking trails. And, and it's pretty cool because it's a, it's a conservation area. So it's not officially a state park, which is why uh, it's more off the beaten track because other places nowadays, if it's like a state park, they'll develop it and put in like more official trails and, and like barriers and things like that. So the problem is, is that it's more dangerous. I think they've lost about 15 or 16 people over the last 20 years, for instance. Um, so you definitely gotta be careful uh, going in there, but uh, it's definitely worth it if you like being off the beaten track. And it's not that far from Buffalo, it's only about an hour south. So definitely good option if you're in the area, for sure. So there's three different entrances. You've got the north entrance, which um, is more like 500 feet above you know the water so that's good to get some good views and they've got some hikes around some ponds there and stuff like that um, I usually walked up along the edge you know kind of on the rim and there was some trails and stuff like that but you got to be really careful because pretty rugged there's not really too much information they have some basic things so you got to really be careful I know some people tried it and just like what I used to do is I used to walk down this steep edge and you could get down to the water that way, but that's really dangerous. If you fell on either side, you could get killed. So definitely um, be careful and, and realize that there's two other entrances on the west side that you can get into the water much easier. So if you're up at that north entrance, uh, you know, it's not the best spot to get to the water. So what I also used to do is I used to hike uh, from that top area and I'd go east a couple hours and just hike until you know it gets lower and down towards the water. And there we'd put our inner tubes or something in and we'd go down and then climb up that steep area back up. But uh, it's definitely dangerous. You'd have to be careful as far as uh, you know tubing or uh, hiking up that area. But the good thing is, is that you have uh, two other entrances which are good for getting to the water. So if you don't wanna hike down that 500 foot cliffs, you can go to the west entrance to Valentine Flats Road has one entrance and then below that there's like 40 road. So yeah, we went in and we just hiked up to that uh, area where you get a nice view and I flew the drone and stuff like that. And we looked around there a bit and then uh, we drove around like another 25 minutes to go to the uh, Southwest entrance, which is the best spot for getting into the water. And from there you could either go left up to um, where the other, where basically two rivers connect, which is pretty nice. Or you could take a right and go down to uh, where they have a couple little waterfalls uh, in the mainstream and then on the side there's also a couple of pretty waterfalls. Uh, but the only bad thing about that is if you do take a right and go down there after about an hour or so, it technically I think is private property. I'm not sure um, like how private property works with like rivers because I think rivers are for everyone, but I'm not sure. It could be private property, so just be careful. Um, I think some of the rangers would give people tickets at certain times of year anyway. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to go down far, and I mean, um, even right where you park your car, you've got some areas where you could swim, and then like five or ten minutes to the right, there was a nice uh, swimming area where you could kind of like, you know, get in and, um, you know, either bring a raft or something and swim around. And there's a few other good swimming holes, so super nice areas, super pretty with the, uh, you know, walking right in through the gorge. 
and uh, definitely an awesome spot. We got to that first flatter waterfall, which was pretty, and then we continued on and we saw the, the bigger waterfall. That's as far as you could go on that end, pretty much. And it takes about uh, an hour and a half almost to get to that waterfall and then an hour and a half back. So it's a long hike and it's a little slippery, so you'd be careful. But uh, even if you don't go all the way down, just to like walk around there a little bit and explore is super nice. Can't think of a lot of other places that are that nice because the other places are like, you know, state parks, which are safer because they've got like really specific trails and they have like more of like guardrails or like things to protect people from going places. But it's kind of boring in that way because then you'll get more more traffic with people and, and families and all kinds of people like, and, and I want people to go out and explore, but I don't want like thousands of people, you know? So um, like we were out there and we saw, you know, like a dozen other people, but for a Saturday, it wasn't like super slammed or anything like that. So on that day, we parked at the 40 Road parking area and hiked around for a couple hours, but you could also go up to the Valentine Flats Creek area and uh, that area is nice. You've got like flat rocks down at the bottom and it's about 25 minutes down to the water or so, and you can get to where the two rivers connect, and you can walk around, and that's really a pretty area too. So that might be maybe the nicest area, I think, out of uh, the three or four parking spots. So anyway, I definitely recommend going to Zor Valley uh, if you have uh, some extra time. Uh, don't just see like Niagara Falls and a few things in Buffalo. I think if you really want to get off the beaten track, I think that's the coolest place you could go. And if you ever need any advice, let me know. I might even lead some tours down there because I really love it. You know, it's really definitely one of my favorites. And so anyway, I'm going to have a few other cool trips uh, coming up. I guess I'll explore Letchworth and a few other places around the Finger Lakes. And maybe even head back to Zor Valley for some uh, tubing or something like that. So anyway, I hope this video was informative. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.